Good evening. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is alive. Lord, thank you. Because you live, we have hope for tomorrow. And I pray tonight, Lord, as we gather over the internet, gather in our homes and living rooms, fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, grandparents, Lord, as families gather together and join us in heart, mind, and spirit, I pray, Lord, that your spirit would just sweep into our hearts and refresh us, Lord. God, we thank you for the blessed hope that we have. And now, Lord, we worship you tonight in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Sing with us in your homes. We shall see the King. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the King when he comes. We shall see the king, we shall see the king, we shall see the king when he comes. He's coming in great power, we'll hail the blessed hour, we shall see the king when he comes. Are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done or go away? We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in great power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? Your Savior, King and Lord of all. The kingdoms of this world shall soon before Him fall. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when He comes. He's coming in great power. We'll hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. All right. Let's help us sing, I'll live in glory. Sing with us. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the leading changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high, I'll live with Him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story up there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I want to be a service along this pilgrim way. And lead the lost to Jesus, as fervently I pray. As day by day I travel, I'll keep Him ever nigh. And live with Him forever, in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love story up there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing, by faith I look away. To yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky. And spend the endless ages in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing my story up there on high. There with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. 
Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Uh, today we received a urgent uh, prayer need that went out over the prayer net right about the time church began this morning for evangelist Anthony No's son, Hunter. I talked to Brother Anthony this afternoon, and Hunter had a very severe seizure this morning there in their home and was rushed to the emergency room. And uh, they stabilized him, running a lot of tests. And he's felt the, Brother Anthony felt the prayers of all the saints, uh, but he's not out, uh, and Hunter's not out of the woods yet. And so uh, we want to continue to pray for him that the Lord will reach in to that uh, hospital room. They've admitted him uh, for overnight for observation. God will touch Hunter. We, we here at Bernard Ridge know this beautiful family, and Hunter is a miracle uh, of God, and uh, we just believe God's healing. There in your homes, you may have prayer needs, prayer requests, that I want to encourage you to just share with uh, one another as we pray here in this room tonight and praying for our nation. I watched our president this evening have to announce that uh, the quarantine or the uh, stay-at-home policy has to be extended uh, due to the rise in deaths and, and cases. It's still a very serious situation, and God n understands that and knows that. And daily we pray for healing in the land. It's going to take a miracle of God, and, but God is up to it. And uh, God is looking for the church to wake up, rise up, and be the church he wants us to be in these last days in prayer. And so I want us to pray for our nation and our leaders tonight and one another for all of our families and the needs that still continue to exist. But I want to remind us this night that God, our God, my God, your God, shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. It's not according to the riches of this world but to his riches that never fail, and Jesus never fails. So let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come to you tonight so thankful and grateful how good and how wonderful you are, Lord. And Lord, we pray tonight, we lift up Hunter No to you. Lord, we ask that in that hospital room right now that you would work a miracle of life in his body. Lord, I pray for Anthony and for his wife Joyce, for their little boy Josh, Lord, that have been traumatized by this. God, I just pray that you would breathe peace over them and comfort. And Lord, we pray, work a miracle for Hunter. We pray for our nation tonight, for our president, Lord, of the difficult decisions that must be made, a nation that is hurting and suffering. And God, we know that you're a God of mercy and a God of miracles. And so, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, send healing to our land. Send healing to our land. And God, we pray for a great revival, a great awakening, Lord, that will wake up the church and wake up this nation to prayer and to calling on you. Father, we pray for families gathered together this evening in their living rooms their homes, Lord, as we worship you tonight. God, I pray for the needs within the families that are watching and are listening. I pray, God, that you would touch them and bless them. Give them peace. Give them confidence and assurance that you that began a good work in us will see it through under the day of redemption. You didn't bring us here to abandon us, and God, you're going to see us through. And Lord, we believe that. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I believe that. How about you? If you believe that, you can say amen. It's all right to say amen there in your homes tonight. I was talking to Darlene today. I said, now, honey, you, um, you raise those hands. You clap those hands. You say amen and praise the Lord. She said, honey, I did that every time. And she watched several church services today. And uh, I believe when this is over, God's going to just move in a great way. And already he's doing great things and getting reports of churches that had parking lot services today and 
great things took place. Amen. Before Sister Jeannie sings a special tonight, I do want to mention that the youth have a youth page, uh, 412 Youth Ministries, I believe. I don't know if it's attached to the Bernard Ridge Facebook page or what, but um, uh, our young people definitely know about it. On that page, there's not only a post for the teens, but Sarah has a post uh, video or whatever for our children. It's going to have a children's church lesson on there. So I want to encourage our youth and our children, parents, if you would maybe help them with it, to get on that page this week and, and, uh, and view that. We want you to stay connected with us, and we want to stay connected with you. By the way, when we live stream, we see your posts that you're watching, and you can also uh, put in prayer requests on there that we can take note of, and uh, we want to stay connected. We're, we're near if you need us in any manner, any way, and uh, I'm appreciate and proud of it. We are going to open the church up again this week. Uh, the last two weeks, we've had the church open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. People have come in. Not in large groups, but a few at a time occasionally uh, to come in here just to meditate, read the Bible, and to pray. And uh, they have reported just, just a peaceful feeling to know that the church is there. And so we're going to continue that this week, uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And while you're here, you, if you want to bring your tithe and offering by and just take it over to Brother Nathan's office here uh, on this side, which if you're coming in the front door, you'd go down the left hallway. The lights will be on. You can just slide it under the clerk's office door. But thank you for your support. Now we let's worship the Lord as Sister Jeannie sings. A camera may need to swing around over that way. But uh, by the way, we appreciate Danny and Leah and what all they're doing with the technical team and uh, appreciate w what the work they're doing. Let's worship the Lord with Jeannie. how it feels to know something's missing to hear a small voice that you just keep dismissing do you know how it feels to be troubled inside and to think just for you on a cross someone died do you know how it feels when he knocks to surrender have your sins washed away never to be remembered and to know that it's real tell me do know how it feels how does it feel to know you're a child of the king your heavenly father owns everything how does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above do you know how it feels when you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night and know it's real, ain't it good to know how it feels? Do you know how it feels when your cold heart has melted and tears starts flowing the moment you felt it? Do you know how you do when you have been changed and it seems that your whole world has been rearranged? Do you know how it feels wherever you Tell me, do you know how it feels? How does it feel to know you're a child of the King? Your heavenly Father owns everything. Do you know how does it feel when you know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above? How does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night? And to know that it's real ain't it good to know how we feel. Man, amen. Let's put our hands together and clap them to the Lord. Amen. He does know how it feels. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> if I knew of a land 
Where no sorrow ever came Where the weather was just right And there'd be no sick or lame Where there'd be no goodbyes And the people live for hay I would sell all I have and move to ever came where the sky was always bright and there'd be no storm or rain where our loved ones were true and would not a trust betray I would sell all I had and move today well I know of a land joys are waiting where the people live forever and for it will be one eternal day without a sorrow and some morning when he calls I'll move away if I do of a land where my dreams would all come true where the things of life were free and there'd be no work to do where no war air could come and we'd live in peace for a I would say We're heading toward that land, praise the Lord. It won't be long. When we see Him, we shall be with Him. We will be like Him. I'm looking for the Lord to come, aren't you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My message tonight is centered around one little three-letter word, new. New, N-E-W, new. And uh, my text is, again, a verse that's, uh, verses of Scripture that have been on all of our hearts lately during this very difficult time. Uh, from Lamentations chapter 3, we've quoted it. We quoted it uh, on the National Day of Prayer service that we had a few weeks ago. At the end of the service, I quote it often, and even in private prayer with the Lord, I sometimes will quote these verses. And they were born out of tragedy as Jeremiah saw his nation and his people that he loved, his king, all of it being taken into captivity. Many died, 
a tragedy, a national tragedy. But in the midst of that, and I, the turning point is found in Lamentations chapter 3. It's a five-chapter book, a very short book. But right in the middle, chapter 3, is the turning point. And I want to focus on the one word in these verses tonight that I'll be reading. And I want to just lift our hearts and encourage us tonight that with God, all things are new. So let's begin with verse 18, Lamentations chapter 3. May God bless the reading of his word to our heart tonight. Jeremiah said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. And here's the turning point. Verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. God wants you to have hope tonight. God wants you in the midst of all of this mess, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, God wants you to have hope tonight. And there is hope. Listen to what he says in verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new. Say that word out loud with me. New every morning. And then he makes a declaration of God. Great is thy faithfulness. May God bless the reading of His word to our heart tonight. As I said a while ago, I want to focus on that little three-letter word, new. Listen to this. We are a new creature. If you're a Christian, you're a new creature. One new man with a new heart and a new spirit given to us by a new covenant from the New Testament by a new and a living way. We are living in a new dispensation, experiencing new things. We have a new name written down in glory. We sing a new song. We're full of new wine, speaking in new tongues, and we're on our way to a new Jerusalem, and we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth. New. Say that again. New. New. With God, everything's new. With God, everything is renewed. God, when He created this earth, Genesis chapter 1, this earth was in darkness. There was darkness on the, on the deep, and the wor world was without form and void, and darkness was on the deep. And God spoke and said, let there be light. God broke through the darkness and created all that there is and brought newness to this world. And in Christ, our lives are new. Jeremiah said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because His passions fail not. They are new every morning. Every morning. Tomorrow morning, when you get up, God's got new mercies and compassions to start the day. Thank God for that. So I want to focus on some of these news that I just introduced to you in the introduction. For instance, in Christ we are a new creature. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. And I want to stop right there. I'm going to come back to that verse later. But to focus in on the fact that when we give our heart and life to Jesus Christ, there's a change comes into our life from within outward. The word creature in the King James Version means creation. God does a creative work in us when we invite Jesus into our life. It's kind of a Genesis chapter 1 taking place in our world and in our life. We become a new creature in Christ Jesus. We often, I often refer in the pulpit to a song that Brother Jack Hudson sings. 
uh, thanks to Calvary, I am different than before. I'm not the man that I used to be. I don't go to the places I used to go. And thanks to Calvary, things are different. When Christ comes into our life, we become a new creature, a new creation. Creation in our life and creation in our world. And the old passes away. So, my friend, if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, man, you're missing out on something new in your life. If you give your life to Jesus and invite Christ into your life, they'll become a Genesis chapter 1 creation in your spirit and in your life, and everything look, will become new and look new to you. I've heard many a person testify that when they got saved, the world looked different. I like the song in the Redback Hymnal. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to invite you to step into a new world by opening your heart and life up to Jesus. He will do the changing. He will do the creating. He will make you a new creature by His power and His grace. Amen. Then... The Bible says that we're one new man. Ephesians chapter 4, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and writes to us here tonight and says, And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we step into a new way of life. And our life changes. And the world around us notes it. Families and loved ones that knew us before we got saved can tell a difference. Why? Because we put on the new man that is created after God's righteousness and true holiness. And when that happens, the things that we used to love to do, we don't care for and we don't want to do anymore. Have no desire for them anymore. But we have a hunger and a craving and a thirst to do the things of God. Jesus said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. God has new things for you if you trust in Him. The Bible talks about the fact that God is able to give us a new heart and a new spirit. Way back in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was a prophet that uh, prophesied in Babylon while Jeremiah was prophesying in Jerusalem. And uh, already Nebuchadnezzar had taken many captives, and Ezekiel was one of them. Daniel and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were part of that early stage of captivities. And while Jeremiah was still prophesying in Jerusalem and Israel, uh, God raised up Ezekiel in, uh, in Babylon and, and used him to preach to the Jews. And, and uh, the, the word that Jerusalem had fallen and had been taken captive and the temple had been destroyed and people had just uh, lost their hope. They had hung their harps on the willows and, and uh, many of the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, were mocking them and making fun of them and say, why don't you sing one of your songs now, one of your songs of David and songs of Zion. And they had just given up and hung their harps on the willows. In the midst of that despair, God moved on the prophet Ezekiel and uh, spoke to him and made this promise. He said uh, in Ezekiel 36 and verse 26, listen to what he says here. And we, again, we're focusing on the word new. He says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. You say, well, how can that be? How can God do that in my heart, in my life? Maybe you've got a bitterness over something in your life. Maybe a loss in your life that has created such a bitterness and you just don't know how that you will ever get over that. God is able to take that heart of yours and turn it into a new heart. He's able to take your spirit and turn it into a new spirit. He's able to take that stony heart that you have, a hard heart, and make it a tender heart of flesh through the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. A new heart and a new spirit. The Bible tells us that God gave unto us a new covenant. A new covenant. The old covenant was good for its time, but it became obsolete when God's Son, Jesus Christ, marched up to that 
hill that day with the cross and was nailed to the cross. And in that, when Christ died and said, it is finished, it completed the work and began God's new covenant with us, with his people. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Listen to what it says here. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. And God did that. He fulfilled that when Jesus died on the cross. He made a new covenant with us. The old covenant was sufficient for its time. But I'm glad we're not living under the Old Testament anymore. Now the Old Testament is good and valuable. We need to read it. There's the, uh, as someone has said one time, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Keep that in mind. The whole Bible is of great value. But I'm glad we're living in a new covenant and new grace under a New Testament. And that brings me to what Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15 says about this New Testament. He says, for this cause, Hebrews 9, 15, for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, Jesus' death, by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see what Jesus did on the cross not only gave you and I today the hope of eternal life, but Jesus reached back into the Old Testament to the saints that were under that Old Covenant and that Old Testament that didn't have the blood of Jesus to wash away their sins. They had the blood of animals and bulls and goats, and Hebrews talks about that, was never sufficient. The blood of animals was never sufficient to wash away their sins. It only covered their sins. So there was sort of this holding, this sort of this uh, uh, setting back of their, their hope until Jesus came. When He came, that was taken away. And now the redemption is not only reaching into the future for us, but also into the past and redeeming the saints of the Old Testament too. Thank God Jesus Christ and what He did at the cross covers all people of all time that trust in Him and believe in Him. So when we come to Jesus, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 and 20 says that we have a new and a living way. Listen to what Hebrews says here. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the Blood of Jesus. We preached about that this morning, didn't we? Not any, just any blood. Not just the blood of, uh, of this one or that one, but the blood of Jesus. We can enter into the holy of holies with boldness. And notice verse 20. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, through his flesh. Oh, thank God, there was much that happened that day on Mount Calvary. And what took place when Jesus gave His life and said it is finished? The Bible says that a miracle happened in Jerusalem in the temple. There was an earthquake and the veil of the temple that separated the inner court and the Holy of Holies was torn in two. In fact, the Bible goes as far as to tell how it was torn. It wasn't torn from the bottom up to the top, but it was torn from the top to the bottom. What happened that day? I'll tell you what happened. The veil that kept us out of the Holy of Holies, that kept us from coming to God. The veil that Job talked about in the Old Testament that said, when I'm in trouble and I need to talk to God, I can't get to Him because He's holy and I'm just a man. And he's not a man as I am that we can just, I could walk up to him and shake hands with him and, and come together with him in judgment and work out uh, our disagreements. He's too holy. 
And Job was desperate. He said, oh, that I had a day's man betwixt us, somebody in between that could bring us together in judgment. You read that in the book of Job. Job was desperate. That was the testimony of the Old Testament saints. But when Jesus died on the cross, when Christ died on the cross, a miracle happened. And in a physical manifestation of that, God reaches down with His hands of holiness and tears that veil from the top, from the top to the bottom. Now you and I can enter in with boldness to the Holy of Holies and come before the throne of God's grace because of Jesus Christ by a new and a living way. I think we ought to put our hands together and thank the Lord for that opportunity that we have. Hallelujah. Now we're living in a new dispensation. What is dispensation? Well, it's times and seasons and areas uh, eras of man's history. <clears throat> There's an old dispensation before Noah's flood. Then there is the, uh, that we call the uh, time pre-Noetic period. And then there's after the flood, up to Abraham, and then from Abraham up to Moses, and Moses on to the kings. And there are dif different dispensations of time throughout the Old Testament. Well, thank God you and I, because of Jesus, because of His blood, live in a new dispensation. And Paul talks about that in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 and verse 26. Hear what Paul says. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. To fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. You see, the Old Testament saints and prophets, as they tried to look in the future and focus into the future, it was difficult for them to decipher everything and how God was going to bring it all about. But God had his dispensations lined out. And you know what? We were part of that. There was a Gentile world that God wanted to reach out to. And God called Paul the Apostle to be a minister and evangelist, to break through that wall and that barrier that had been built up uh, 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 against the Gentiles, against us, against those, and, uh, and, and allow Paul to go in preaching the gospel and pour out His Spirit upon them, as well as Peter going to the Jews. And thank God for that, that uh, God brought us all into a new dispensation. In the Old Testament, it was a mystery. It was hid from the ages past, from generations uh, of past, but now is made manifest to His saints. I said a while ago that I'd come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. You know, I read early in there about how that uh, when we come to Christ, we are a new creature. But there's a, another promise in that very verse. Paul says it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. Amen? When you get saved, you look around, everything looks new. Why, it may be the same thing that... Uh, been around, you look at your wife, she looks new. Or maybe she looks at you and says, boy, you, you've changed, you look new. Everything changes. All things become new. When my dad got saved, I've shared this here with our Bernard Ridge family. I love his testimony, how that my great-grandmother, Grandma Wright, a Pentecostal woman in Letcher County, prayed for my dad, for many years, prayed him through the war, World War II. The night that mom invited dad one more time, just one more invitation, will you come in with me? Dad was going to drop mom off at church and take my brother to a drive-in theater to, uh, to uh, see uh, Hop Along Cassidy, a movie, a western or something. And mom looked at him one more time and said, Ernest, would you come in with me? Right there in front of Main Street Church of God in Neon, Kentucky, something drew him in. 
what he had planned changed. I believe the sweet Holy Spirit conviction just drew him in, pulled him in. And he came inside and that night he got saved. Well, the first thing he did is went to his grandma, my great-grandma, went to her house. She was homebound, not able to get out. And he come in the door and looked at Grandma Wright and said, Grandma, I want to tell you something. And all at once she did a Pentecostal whoop. She started shouting. She said, you don't have to tell me. I can see it on your face. You got saved. Folks, I'm telling you, when we come to Jesus and give all of our stuff and dump all our stuff on Him, He's got the big shoulders. He takes it all. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There's somebody maybe listening tonight watching this. You've been carrying a heavy load. And you don't think the Lord is interested in taking that from you. He wants you to cast all your cares on Him. And when you do and you surrender it all to Him and surrender all of your past to Him, trust Jesus and let Him into your heart. He will make you a new creature. And you can walk up to somebody just like my dad and say, hey, I want to tell you what, I, what happened. You don't have to tell me. I can see it on your face. You got saved. Behold, behold, all things are become new. Now, Revelation chapter 2 verse 17 says that when we get to heaven, there's a new name waiting on us. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is a promise from Jesus himself. <clears throat> he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And you know what? We church of God folks love to eat, don't we? That'll fit us just well. I'll give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. You say, well, what's the significance of that? It's what's written on it. On that white stone, listen to this, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. On June the 24th, 1954, I was looking this week at the certificate of birth of a Lindsay Howard Cornett at 7.02 a.m. at Notre Dame Hospital in Lynch, Kentucky. I was born in a Catholic hospital in a coal mining region of Harlan County, Lynch, Kentucky. And it had my name written up at the top. One night in Newport, on a Sunday night, when my pastor gave the invitation back around 1963, and I came up, gave my life to Jesus, the Lord looked over, and in a recording angel, I, I'm just dreaming here and just thinking, and said, write down, he's got a new name. Every one of us that believe in Christ, there's a promise to us, a new name written on that white stone. Oh, thank God we're going to be singing a new song, Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Folks, like I preached this morning about the value of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, we're going to be singing about His blood in that day, and we're going to be singing a new song. Acts chapter 2 verse 13 says that you and I have new wine. When the Bible said that uh, on the day of Pentecost, the People came in and they were amazed at what was happening. And they said, these men are full of new wine. Oh, let me tell you, it's not the kind that intoxicates and gives you a headache and a hangover. But it's the kind that gives you energy and joy. The joy of the Lord filled with His Spirit, filled with His love, filled with His grace. Praise God, singing with an anointing, preaching, living a life in the power of His Spirit, a new wine. And in Mark 16, 17, says that these signs shall follow them that believe. 
In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Thank God when Jesus went back to the right hand of the Father, he prayed the Father, and the Father sent another comforter. And on the day of Pentecost, when the comforter of the Holy Ghost arrived and filled that room and filled their hearts, the Bible said they all spake with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. One of the nine gifts of the Spirit, tongues, as well as other gifts, new tongues. There's going to be a new Jerusalem coming. I sang that song a while ago, If I Knew of a Land. I'd sell all I have and move today. Well, I know of a land where joy is waiting, where the people live forever and for a. T'will be one eternal day without a sorrow and some morning when he calls, I'll move away. I've got a feeling that morning is coming a lot sooner than we think. We're near that time. The signs around us, the troubles, the distress of nations. Read Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. You'll see these things are already happening right before our eyes. And Jesus said to us, when you see these things, don't look down, but look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. The Bible promises that one day there'll be a new Jerusalem. Listen to this. Revelation 21 and 2. Listen to what John saw. He saw it as if it had already happened. Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Jerusalem now is a divided city, isn't it? And it is a hot spot right now and has to be protected by the Iron Dome. And, but one day there's going to be a Jerusalem that's going to be a new one. And Jesus will sit on the throne and we will worship Him around the throne forever and forever. That brings us to the fact that we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah 65, 17. The Bible promises His. Isaiah prophesied it. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. Think about that. Think about that. One day, this earth that we see now, that we occupy now, one day it's going to be gone and there'll be a new heaven, and there'll be a new, new heaven and a new earth. I wonder if God will even... Change the constellation. It's the stars will even be different. I, I, we'll find out, won't we? It's going to happen. And so there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Listen to what Peter says. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. And I'm going to close with this here in just a moment. I've got one more verse. Listen to what Peter said. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise... Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now when you put those two verses together, what I think is important about that is that because this earth has been saturated with so much wickedness, monuments to men, memorials, all kinds of things, God is just going to Burn all of that up. The Bible talks about a day when the heavens and the earth and the elements will melt with great fervent heat. And God will just totally remove all of that and create a new heaven and a new earth for the new Jerusalem to come down from God out of heaven to be with. And all of those things and all of those memorials of the past will be gone because the Bible, Isaiah said, the former thing will not be remembered. Jesus is coming soon. Be ready to go. And I want to close with this verse, and I'm going to uh, close here in just a moment with a prayer. But remember this, time's running out. We see all of these things around us. It's no time to be delaying or putting off giving your heart and life to Jesus. And there may be someone listening tonight, viewing this service, that you once knew the Lord and you've allowed uh, yourself to drift away from Jesus. It's time to come back home. Give your life to the Lord. I want to close with Revelation 21 and 5. Revelation 21 and 5. And he that sat 
upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. In other words, the Lord told John, John, you need to write this. This, this is true. This is a faithful. I'm going to make all things new. Don't you want to be a part of that? Don't you want to be in on that? I do. And I thank God by the grace of God, I'm going to be in on it. And the folks that are here with us tonight are going to be in on it. There's a day coming, and there will be one eternal day. One eternal day. No more night there. Oh, no wonder John the Revelator, three different times, said, Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Be ready to go. Ask Jesus into your heart tonight. Ask Him to forgive you. He's ready. He's wanting to give you new things and make you a new creation that you can look around and everything around you is new and becomes new. May that happen tonight. Let us pray. Father in heaven, how grateful we are for your goodness, your love, your eternal grace. Lord, thank you for the promises of your word. That little three-letter word has so much value to us, Lord. Because the things of this world get old and wear out, wear thin, and have to be thrown away. But, oh, Lord, I thank you that when you save us, you bring to us a new life, a new creation, a new way of living, a new and a living way. And Lord, I pray the same for someone that may be tuning in and listening to this, viewing this service tonight, that tonight be the night, the turning point in their life, that they surrender and begin this new walk with you, Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray your blessings this week. God, we pray again for healing in the land. Lord, we thank you for your grace that keeps us through all of this. Protect us, keep us safe, keep us well. In your eternal love and grace, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you. Tomorrow night, join me for a virtual prayer meeting at 6.30. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. That mini prayer, we're finished now. <laughs> Tell you what I worry about is.